What is colorblind racism? Before we get to that, let's look at racism. In the United States today, African Americans have about 10 cents for every dollar of wealth that whites have. African Americans are also overrepresented in the prison system. They're seven times as likely as whites to be incarcerated for drug offenses. Even though blacks and whites use and sell drugs at exactly the same rates. Although the United States is a racially unequal society, very few people admit to being racist. How is it possible to have widespread racial inequality in a society with no racist? How do we have racism without racists? Eduardo Bonilla Silva argues we no longer have Jim Crow racism. During the Jim Crow era, African Americans were denied access to schools, places of business, and even water fountains designated for whites. Today, it is illegal to discriminate based on race. However, racial inequality persists. We have moved from Jim Crow racism to colorblind racism. Colorblind racism is a racial ideology that rationalizes racial inequality using non-racial language. For example, how would you explain the fact that many cities still have segregated schools and neighborhoods, even though there are no laws that prevent African Americans from moving into predominantly white neighborhoods, there continue to be neighborhoods that have few to no black residents. School segregation also persists despite the absence of laws that mandate it. In Washington DC, for example, 71% of black students attend schools that have no white students. If you ask a person on the streets to explain why schools and neighborhoods are segregated by race, they might say that African Americans prefer to live with their own kind, or that there's nothing that prevents Latinos from leaving ethnic neighborhoods. This is a form of colorblind racism because it uses liberal ideas such as freedom of choice to explain racial inequality while ignoring the factors that create and perpetuate segregation. You see, studies show that although most whites prefer neighborhoods that are all or mostly white, very few black people prefer black neighborhoods. This is borne out by the fact that if large numbers of African Americans move into a white neighborhood, whites will leave in droves. Black families are also often unable to afford houses in wealthy white neighborhoods due to the fact that black families have only a tenth of the wealth white families have. Another explanation you might hear for racial segregation is that people just like to be around others like them. This is called naturalization, where people explain racial dynamics as natural or normal, again, ignoring the structural factors that created segregation. You might also hear someone say that African Americans live in poor neighborhoods because they don't work hard enough to afford to move out. This frame is called cultural racism because it blames racial disparities on supposed cultural differences. Another thing you might hear is minimization of racism. When whites will say that discrimination doesn't play a role in creating racial inequality because most people aren't racist. Notably, black people generally believe that discrimination is widespread, whereas many whites claim it's not. Eduardo Bonilla Silva argues that white people use rhetorical strategies to express racist ideas without being labeled as racist. Bonilla Silva argues that today's racial norms do not permit the overt expression of racist views. Thus, whites have developed concealed ways of expressing racist views and reproducing racial inequality. For example, when researchers asked white respondents if they would mind if their daughter married a black man, 
They responded by saying things like, I'm not a racist, but I don't think interracial marriages work. Or they might say, I don't mind if my daughter marries a black man, but you have to think about the children. These rhetorical strategies allow whites to indirectly express discriminatory or prejudiced ideas without appearing to be racist. Bonilla Silva found that people use colorblind racial ideology to justify racial inequality. Colorblind ideology allows whites to explain why racial inequality is not due to racism. In addition to rationalizing racial inequality, colorblind racism reproduces racial inequality by permitting people to engage in discriminatory actions without being labeled racist. This is how we have racism without racists.